just a little while ago, we got a chance to go to Toronto and talk to Brother Jake Edwards, Canada's number one DJ at uh, Q107 during their 15th anniversary. Let's take a look at what transpired. You're tuned to the Q Morning Zoo on Toronto's best rock. Q107. 21 years ago, the voice of Jake Edwards first graced the airwaves of Boston. Since then, he's worked his way through the ranks of radio with his blend of gifted gab. And now, after three years at the helm of Q's Morning Zoo, yeah. Brother Jake is happy to call yeah. Toronto home. Jake, what's it like to wake up Toronto? Millions of people, the chemistry between Jane, yourself, Spike. What is that experience like? It's a big thrill, you know. As soon as you hit the mic, you can hear like the, the little different noises in your headphones and you know you're on the air. There's nothing like a live feeling when you hit the mic and anything you say, you can't take a second take on it. So everything is very spontaneous. It's very uh, up to the minute. It has to be topical. It has to be semi-researched. And, and we just go in and kind of just have a party on the air. So the chemistry between Spike, Jane and I, and the coach is, um, is, is good. I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot of unity there. We, I think one person plays the foil. I try to come up with smart cracks. Jane, of course, is the foil. I mean, she's the girl next door. And she, you know, she's, she's not innocent, but she's, she's nice. She just out nices you to death. And we end up looking like jerks because we'll, we'll you know, we'll get on her and say, well, she'll say something that was kind of corny and we'll get on her. We'll end up look like, looking like jerks, and I yes, think that kind of chemistry is really hard to find, yeah. where not everybody is trying to up one, uh, you know, up one. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Up onemanship. One upmanship. One upmanship. <laughs> thank you. You see, now you tried to do it to me. See, right. we could never work together, Mike. It wouldn't work. Okay. We couldn't do okay, it. Okay, we couldn't do it, Mike. <laughs> I'm fired. <laughs> Your face is a mess. There we go. Your tone, your dress. Q107 Toronto's best rock. I'm Brother Jake Edwards, downtown Jane Brown, and the Spike Atola of love going to the telephone. First of all, what is our five and five prize? We have a parachute jump from the excellent people at the Parachute School of Toronto. Also, a pair of tickets to see Blue Rodeo on Thursday night, and a chance for a trip for two to Montreal with John Derringer to see Blue Rodeo at the Fête Montréal on August 8th. And, and the whole home version of the Boil Buster kit. Let's go to the phone. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Are we going to your house? Are we going to your house? a little later on to land some boils, Jake. Yeah, is that what you're saying? It's one big happy family, and it's it's tough sometimes to get that that real unity. There's always somebody bitching about somebody else, you know. And 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 uh, the good thing about this radio station is is that we seem to be uh, we seem to be all doing it for the same cause, which is mm -hmm. rock and roll, and and uh, for the stuff that we do. Uh, we get, we, I mean, people come up to us and they'll say, you know, God, you guys played some great tunes this morning. I don't hear that anywhere else. Deep Purple, Lazy. You just stay in bed, dang, dang. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and, and we got the monitors turned up. It's loud in the control room. Uh, we come off the air at 9 o'clock. Everybody's kind of just coming in and they're going, Ooh, and we're just pumped beyond belief. And they're going, what's happy? How many, how many coffees did you have this morning? How many coffees did you have? <laughs> no, we didn't. We're just full of energy. You know, and people go, yeah. the men is on something. I'm on endorphins, period, and, you know, I'll go on record as saying that, and I'll even do a urinalysis to, to prove it. <laughs> I get checked regularly, by the way, here about every week, <laughs> just to make sure. Q107, what's your question for the Amir? Uh, you want to play five and five? Okay, good. Uh, you mentioned earlier some of the uh, on-air characters and personalities. We're looking at the champ, we're looking mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. Mr. Stress. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about the key to the success of these characters, especially the champ. He's been around for a long time now, and you've got these local clubs and bars doing these local contests. What is the key to their success? Well, I think um, the champ... It never fails to amaze me. I mean, you know, he's been on for a while, and you wonder exactly how how much legs does this guy have? Can he can he burn it? Will he burn out, or will he will he uh, go on to be here for many years? And I go out to golf courses and stuff, and I'll see 45 year old men looking over and go, "Hey, uh, are you the champ?" And I'll go, "Yeah." And they go, "I told you, I told you." And these are like dentists, psychiatrists, uh, you know, from from dentist to the scum of the earth. Yeah. Everybody seems to like the guy, and, and just when you think you've heard every episode possible, there's another one that will come out and absolutely floor you. Okay, everybody, sit back. The Avenger of goodwill, the man that can snap at any given moment. He goes out of his mind. He's the champ. Champ! Buddies, be the champ. I brought you by LaVette's blue light. Right out of the ice. I'm over at Knuckles Muldoon Place. I don't even know why I keep hanging around with this idiot because he always really thinks 
Church. <laughs> <laughs> who does uh, the creative side to that, the writing? We have uh, people who fax their stuff in. They still fax their stuff in. We had a contest where Holyfield and Holmes were going to fight in Las Vegas, so we, we went on and said, look, we'll send you to see the fight. Uh, in Las Vegas, just send your episodes in. Like we got 2,000 episodes. It was like in a period of two weeks, the fax machine was jammed up. So people still want to be in on it. And if you'd like to film, by the way, if you're watching Metal Mike's show right now, if you want to fax in some champs, I need the help. And then I come up with my own stuff too. So I do a little bit of the writing. Great. And the, the listeners help me out. Okay, everybody, here comes the boy, David Boy. <laughs> Cloudy, sunny break, scattered showers today, 40% chance, 26 for a high today. Beautiful day tomorrow. 19 right now, you rebel, rebel, you. Five and five next from Q107. <laughs> When you go out in the public, uh, do people know who you are, and how do they like you? Well, uh, the company uh, that you work for uh, actually did a piece on us uh, uh, a little while back, and it because it, I don't do a lot of TV. I'm too ugly for TV. I don't even know what I'm doing on your show here, because geez, <laughs> I mean, take a look. I mean, I look like a batch rear end dragged through a sea of gravy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's, uh, it shows like this that, that if some, somebody will see it and they'll say, hey, I recognize you. And of course, being out to all the bars and stuff, people will recognize you. It's not, if I had it, if like Spike Gallagher was on City TV, he's very recognizable. I don't, right. you know, I don't know if I want that. I, that's why I chose radio. I like being behind the scene. I can go to work looking like this and not worry about my hair, not worry about my nails, not worry about anything. You just get up, you go in, do the show, and then worry about your, your hygiene a little later. And it's a completely <laughs> different medium. Yep. Um, it yep. has, it has yep. magic all its own, really. Yeah, it really does. And the theater of the mind stuff is what I'm really into. Uh, if I can make somebody kind of create the picture I'm trying to give across the radio, uh, I've done my job, you know. Q107 has recently moved from their studios at Young and Bloor to North York, where they now occupy the 14th and 15th floors of a new high-rise, along with their AM counterpart, CHOG. From here, the state-of-the-art broadcast facility overlooks the metro skyline. Pleasant surroundings for pleasing programming. Brother Jake rides a wave of success at the Mighty Q. Could you do anything else? Would you be a milkman? I could. You know, uh, I don't think I could. Um, you know, I remember uh, my dad tried to, to uh, get me to go into the CNR. He'd worked there for years, and, he, and I went in. I failed the medical. That was like the biggest day of my life. Yes, I failed the medical. <laughs> I can get into radio. <laughs> and you're paying, Dad. <laughs> so, I mean, if I would have, if I would have, like, passed the medical, I might still be driving an overhead crane somewhere in the CNR yeah. and getting the golden handshake and retiring and having a little family and watching my grandchildren grow up. <laughs> Great. Well, Jake, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Hey, fantastic, and uh, continued success with your show. I'll Thank be watching. You.